Hello and welcome to Python for Everybody. This is another of our worked examples and I'm your instructor, Charles Severance. So the example we're going to do right now is exercise 4.6 in chapter four. Uh, this is an exercise where we're kind of taking code that we've already written and um, redoing it in a way to uh, just prove that we can do it with a function. So it's not like it's gonna do anything different. It's gonna do exactly the same um, as before and we're just gonna do it a different way. So let's go ahead and start up our text editor, Adam. Show you a couple new features of this. Um, it's already been open. Let me sort of open it here again. Um, I'm gonna open, get a new window, and then I'm going to open. But what I'm gonna do is to open this folder, right? So it's this folder right here, and I'm gonna open that. So instead of opening a file, which is what I've been doing so far, I'm gonna open a folder. So now you can see all the folders that I have, and they're just exactly the same folders that I've been making under uh, desktop py4e. And so I can go and look at my previous assignments. The other thing I can do is I can control click on this and say new folder. And I can say ex exercise 04, 06. Again, I like the 04 and the 06 just so things line up when we get to chapters 10 and 11. That's why I'm naming my files this way. And I'm going to adapt exercise, the code from exercise 3.1. We could do exercise 3.2, but it's longer. The difference between 3.1 and 3.2 was one uses try accept and the other one does not. So I'm going to try to start with this one. I always clean up and get rid of that. So here is our time and a half for overtime logic. And I am going to say file save as. So I'm making a copy of it. And I am going to put this in this folder exercise 46 and I'm going to make sure to rename my file 0406. Okay. So now I've got exercise 0406 which is this one right here. That's the file we've got and it's there and so let me pop up my terminal window. CD desktop, CD PY4E, CD EX04 I'll hit the tab for 06 because there was only one in 04. And so I can see where I'm at and I have one file here, ls. Minus L gives extended information. And I can say Python 3 ex04 py. 10, 10, and away we go. Okay, so this is this code. I'm going to get rid of some of this logic here. I just use these print statements, which I commented out just to make it a little more dense. Okay, so let me start by just putting a function in here. And of course, def is the keyword for function and compute pay is the name of the function and it's supposed to take two parameters, hours and rate. And then you add a colon and then we are indented, right? So the, the indent is to determine how long the function it lasts, how many lines it is. And I'm just gonna say print in compute pay. Right, give myself a blank line. I'm gonna save that. Now, you will, I'm gonna run it now. I'm gonna run it now and you'll notice something real quick. this line never came out. And that's because the way this works is this simply defines the function and then it continues running, but it doesn't run that code. And it ran this code and then it did, in this case, the else code and then it did the print. But it never came up and actually ran this code. We have to call the function, okay? We have to call the function before it's going to actually run. So now let's make a call. Um, compute pay and let's pass in our variables that we have in this main code fh and fr. So that compute pay fh and fr and then I'm going to print out hours and rate. So 
So now you'll see it's going to do the input, the input, convert to floating, call the function, which is going to run this one line, and then continue down here. All right? So now what it's going to do is going to define it, run this, run this, call compute pay, which is going to temporarily suspend, come in here, run this code, and FH is going to map to hours, and FR is going to map to rate, and then it's going to come back, and then it's going to continue down here running this code and then finishing. Okay, so that's that's what we're what's going to run. So this time we will see compute pay and we will see the number for hours and rate. So I'll run it again. 40 hours, $10 an hour. Ah, we see a mistake. I'm like, and then you're going to see the word compute pay here. And I'm like, okay, that didn't happen. Well, what's going wrong? Let's take a look at what's going wrong. I don't plan to make these mistakes, I just make them. Let me show you what's wrong here. See this little blue dot? That's what's wrong with my code. And if you don't catch that, then you'll say, oh, I'm crazy. Well, I'm not crazy. I just made a mistake. I forgot to save it. File Save or Command S. So now I saved it. I didn't change a single line of code. It was right. I forgot to save it. So I'm going to run it again now. 40 hours, $10. And look, now I see this line. So it came into compute pay and then came back and then finished this part and did compute pay. Okay? Now, this isn't enough. What I need to do is I need to move this code, the actual pay computation. So I'm going to cut that and I'm going to put it in here. But now this variable fh belongs to the main program. It doesn't belong to this code. Now I don't want to use that. So I want, I want to say hours. So I'm taking whatever hours are being passed in and then using rate. And I'm just kind of changing all of these to match the parameters inside the function. This is hours and this is rate. And this is hours. And this is rate. Now I'm going to print a print statement inside. I'm going to say returning. And then I'm going to print XP. And then, still inside the function, I want to return a value from this function. So I'm saying the returned value for this function is actually in the current function variable XP. And then, I'm going to call, actually I'm going to not call this XP, I'm going to call this pay in here. Oops, not with capital, I don't want to be capitalized. Pay, and pay, and pay. So it's, it's returning pay, and then in here I'm going to say XP equals compute pay. So what we've achieved here is, let me get rid of that. What we've achieved here is it's going to come down, define a function, then read the input, convert it to floating point, and then call compute pay, passing in FH as hours and FR as rate, right? And then it's going to take hours and rate, do whatever it does with the if then else. It's going to print these things, then it's going to return it, and then whatever this pay variable is effectively goes back into this expression as the return value and again gets assigned into XP. Okay? So that's basically what's going to happen and then we'll print, it'll come back and then print XP. Okay? So let's go ahead and run. Oh wait, I almost did it again. Look at the little blue dot. You guys can watch the blue dot and when I forget to save it and when I then run it, it'll blow up. So $10 an hour, oops, 10 hours, uh, $15 an hour. So now it worked. So you can see these two print statements come from while this is running. The input happens, it calls the function, and then it prints out the pay. And now to finish this, to get it right, I will simply comment out my little helpful debugging print statements and run it one more time. Uh, 40 hours, $10 an hour, and run it again, and have it be $50 an hour, and 50 hours and $10 an hour, so 500, 550. So that one is now working. So that's that one is completed, and we have moved our computation 
inside of the function. So I hope that you find this useful. I hope that you find this entire course useful and, uh, and thanks for watching.